Thank you all for joining in. Let me start with uh, Mac Solutions Strapline. Connect, secure, and analyze. OPC Router product falls in the Connect portfolio, enabling centralized data communications, which I will touch in a minute. With our secure portfolio, we have comprehensive offering of solutions ranging from USB scanners to distributed intrusion detection systems. Um, and as far as Analyze is concerned, uh, Mac Solutions Process View Software is a market leader in the UK for alarm analytics. Well, so the webinar for today, there are three questions that I will try to answer today. Uh, why there is a need for centralized data communications platform. Second, what is OPC router? And last but not least, where is OPC router being used already? And how is it benefiting the, the existing customer base? So let's make a start with why have a standardized communication platform? And now I have divided that into five big reasons. Number one, complexity. Increasing complexity throughout OT and IT applications with more and more sophisticated softwares out there uh, requires a simple and easy solution of bridging that gap between the OT and IT. Number two, connectivity. There's a constant increase um, in the demand for consistent data interfaces between low level devices and higher level business systems. For instance, if you want a SAP system to communicate to a PLC, then this is the ex exact reason why you would need a standardized communication platform. Number three, scalability. Scaling is not only scaling from one site, one plant to multiple sites and having a corporate view, but also having the ease of use across the board. So, Having a standardized solution means it's easier to, to use across the board. Management. Requirement for centralized managed backups, updates, version controls, and system backups is a very, very essential requirement. And having one single software to maintain and manage makes it very, very easy and simple. Last but not least is talent gaps, which we can also refer to as a lack of expertise across different departments in the area of data management, ranging from OT to IT. The, the application change and so does the interface. Uh, and that is the reason why having one single standardized communication platform makes it simple for, for the automation engine to use or an IT professional to use it. Right. Now, what is Mac Solutions' answer to this problem? And how can we achieve a single communications layer? And the answer is OPC Router. The OPC Router optimizes and digitalizes production processes using one single platform for the entire industrial communication needs. What it does is, if, if you have a PLC or a sensor level communication happening on the factory shop floor, and that information has to be passed on to a higher level automated system, for example, databases, uh, MES systems, um, SAP systems, or, or any other ERP systems, then this software can do that. Real-time data exchange between integrated systems is OPC Router's speciality and the beauty, ranging from OPC UA, SAP, SQL, MQTT, REST, SOAP, Excel, printers, etc. Um, you, you, you name a type of data source um, and we have got it. Not only that, using the same software, you can actually design your printer labels. That meaning you don't even have to install your label designer software on a computer separate to where the OPC router is installed. That means an MES system can directly communicate with your printer 
using this software on the factory shop floor. Not only that, but also a PLC can send a print command to the printer if needed. And all that is achieved by a graphical user interface, which allows clear, crisp overview of data connections of what's connected where, and it helps you diagnose if something's, something goes wrong. OPC Router has a modular approach, meaning you can start very small. You don't have to pay a, a hefty lump sum amount to pay for the software upfront. You can start small with just connecting a data source to a data destination. And as your application grows, you can then start adding in more plugins. So for instance, if the data has to be sent to SAP plugin, you just start off with having OPC connectivity to your data sources to SAP. And then as you need printer cap capabilities, you can use, you can add that into the mix. If you want to record that data, you have the databases available. If you want to put that data into the cloud, then you can use the IoT um, protocols to send that to the, to the cloud. And that's the beauty of it. Let, let, let me show you where is OPC Router making a difference already. A company called Xrite, who are the world leader manufacturer and supplier of inline color management and control systems for the manufacturing industry, are using OPC Router um, se to seamlessly interconnect data from specialized systems to ensure reliability and quality of data to improve quality, productivity, and efficiency of the overall system. Allowing customer to record data from all sources to get comprehensive picture when an analysis is required. End result, customer spends less time managing and maintaining the system and more time in production, driving the overall cost of the solution down. Several other customers are already benefiting from OPC Router, and that information will be shared um, at a later stage with this slide deck. Let me now give you an overview of the software and show you how easy and simple the interface is. Right, in essence, this is the OP OPC configuration window. Starting the workflow starts from the left to the right. Um, on the left hand side, the first pane here is actually the different configuration stages, starting from the plugins, moving on to connections, templates. Templates actually making your life easier to, to, to configure larger systems and reusing uh, OPC router uh, in other install bases. Product uh, go production. Um, this this uh, actually puts all your changes into production. And then last but not least is the state where you can actually in real time see the, the connections working and it makes your diagnosis easier. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Second pane being uh, plugins, you can see that you're ranging from storage plugins to uh, IoT plugins to Top floor, which is the IT plugins, including SAP and other ERP systems you can connect to. Shop floor, wh where you have OPC UA servers, um, connections to OPC DA server connections, including injection molding drivers, um, advanced. Not only that, but we also have integrated system with Telegram, which is an application uh, which can live on your phone and you can maintain your own server for that. Um, meaning internally you can send messages on the phones using this system generated by your OC or IT side of things. And then printers, which I briefly described, that you can all you can have the, the barcode label designer in, integrated here, but not only that, but you can send print commands through um, the OPC router software. And at the extreme right are the transfer objects. Now, these are the objects which you can use as data sources and data destinations, and a few other advanced transfer objects which allows you calculations uh, and, uh, and other um, script creation uh, tools. 
So let's start. Um, in today's demonstration, I will show how you can actually link two tags between an OPC server. Not only that, but you can also manipulate those tags before they're actually written to another tag within the same OPC server. So in order to do that, I have to configure an OPC UA source. So I, by double clicking the OPC UA source in the plugins menu, I can see that. Now I've already configured one source, which is an OPC US server running on my computer in the shape of get server EX. Right, let's see what parameters we need, right? So I've just double clicked on, on that. Um, just to show you how you can add a new um, connection, just simply click, click the plus button here. And then you get all the, the different fields which, which, which an automation engineer would know how to connect an OPC server, right? Let's, let's go back to the already configured one. Here, I've got the name for that server. I've got client certificate, which I have installed by just clicking the add button here. Who trusts this certificate? I, I can configure that. I've got the endpoint URL. Now, these are all the basic configurations for uh, the OPC UA. Um, be it be the, the login details. Also, what you can use here is the redundant server which means if you've got two servers simultaneously connected, you can connect to two servers simultaneously. And if one server goes down, then you can use the other one. Simply test the connection. Once I've put in the details, which are already there, um, I get a successful dialog box, meaning the connection is okay. Now, simply what I need to do now is make connections. So I'll go to the connection stage of the process, create a connection. I'm tag link, I'll name it. Now this opens a new tab. So going forward, backwards and forth, backward and forth to your different configuration pages is very, very easy and simple. So you don't have to go and find it over and over again. So as the, the simplicity is key, we would just use drag and drop for OPC UA source here, and then drag and drop again, which is the OPC UA destination here. And in between, what I want to do to throw in the mix is some sort of calculation. Right. Now, how do I configure that? By just simply double clicking each of the, the boxes. Here, what I need to do is select the OPC server which I have configured. Now, by doing that, I can now browse that OPC server. And within that OPC server, I've got a few tags which, can, which I can pick up and use them. So what I'll use for now is current height and current width. So two tags, which I want from an OPC source. And what I want to do with that is calculate the area. As simple as that. Now within this calculator, by double clicking, I can now add local tags, which I just labeled H for height, and then W for width. Now just to mention, these placeholder tags are internal tags within the OPC router and not the OPC source. Now, as you all know, the, the formula for area is height multiplied by width, and that's very simple. Now I can test that formula within a test window by just simply multiplying height by width. And as you can see, the result here, which is 100, it gives you that. Now when, I, when I've tested the formula, I know everything's fine. I can now go ahead with everything. Not only that, just before we move forward, I would like to show you that what does this calculator support? It supports literally every mathematical expression there is. So it is very powerful. Right, let's move forward.
Now, what we've done is we've configured the source, we've configured the calculation, which we want to do, and now we want to put the output value into OPC UA, which is another tag within the same server. So I select the server, I browse the tag again, and I have a tag called current area. And I can now close that. Now simply link width with the width, with the connection, height with the height, and now output value with a, a, to the, the, the tag which I've configured as a target. Now, after doing that, how often do I want to do, the, do that calculation and write that tag? Within the transfer objects, we have got triggers, different triggers. For this instance, I'm going to use OPC trigger. And when do I want to do it? On a data change. So I'll drag and drop that. Simply double click to configure. Select which OPC tag will trigger this data exchange. Select the tag. So data changes. I want to trigger the data change. And also, if the width changes, I want to do the same. Right. Now, these two triggers can be either in an or relationship, but also in an and relationship, right? So all means, as you all know, uh, if either of height or width changes, then we trigger the, the values from the data source to go into the calculator, and then the calculator output will put into the current area. Now, the next stage is to actually load this configuration into the actual service, into production. Click go to production. It's asking me to restart the service. I simply click yes, and then go into this state stage where I can actually monitor what's happening. And um, I've got another external um, OPC client here, which would show us the values which are actually on the OPC server at the moment. We've got the current area, we've got the current height, we've got the current width. And as soon as the server will restart, we will be able to see all that here in the state configuration option. Now it's gone tick. And there you go. Here we have the actual values from the OPC server showing here, and the actual value which is being written to um, the target OPC server. Now, these OPC servers can be the same OPC servers, or they can be different ones. Just in order to show you that it's working, I'm using an external um, OPC client, making that change, switch that to, let's say, Hundred, um, let's say to ten, and okay that that value's changed, and so has OPC router instantly. Now this interface makes your life very easy because you can clearly see and diagnose where the problem is or where it lies. Is it at the source or is it at the destination? Right. Now moving on to the next. Um, demo which is logging your data into sql database i'll go back to the connection stage i'll configure another connection data logger this will give me another clean slate simply drag and drop the source drag and drop the destination and I, all i want to do is again store the area rather than the the height and the width I'll bring in the calculator again, right? Simply double click, configure um, your tags, which is the height and the width. Close that, okay. Um, put in the calculator again, create your internal tags, height and the width. Put in the formula, H times W. Test that so we've not made any mistake. Voila, works. Okay. 
um, and then configure the database. So what we want is all three fields within the database to be filled. Now here, what we can do is I can select the database which I want to connect to, and I can select the table which I want to connect to. And then I want all these three fields to be written in the database. Just click OK. Simple. Now, connecting width with width, height with height, tag value with tag value. Now here, I need a tag name. So I can put a constant, which would constantly insert every time um, this connection is triggered, area into the tag name. And then I want a different time to be inserted into the database. Say so I put in a variable using system time or system time UTC, depending on my requirement, and then link that to time. Now, what I've done here is getting my data from the source, which is OPC, doing a calculation on that data, putting the output into a database, and storing that into a SQL Server, um, putting that tag name in there, a different timestamp in there, and how do I trigger that? Same, whenever the height changes or width changes. So I put in the, the same triggers again. Okay, I'll check if my triggers in OR link or AND link. Then go on to the Go Productive section. I can see they're all green, so I've I've just put in that data logger section. I'll go productive with that. It'll restart my service. And then I can go into the States section and then see the data logger in action. Voila, you see the, the same what you're doing in tag link, which is value 100 writing a data back to the, the OPC US source, we can, we can, we are simultaneously recording that in a database as well. Now using the external OPC client, I can make a change. Let's say I put 15 again there, making the area 150. Instantly, I can see the change here. Now I'll take you into my SQL Management Studio instance and show you that the, da the, the, the data has been written within, see, today, today, and the area has been written there. Simple. It's just worked seamlessly. Now this doesn't only work with databases. What you have to put in perspective is you can work with the IoT protocols, including MQTT, REST. You can work same way, connecting to SAP systems and writing data back to your devices using OPC servers like Kepware, which have device level access. Um, you, you, can, you can link OPC and printers together. So if a PLC has to write or print a label, you can enable that through the software. Brilliant. Now, we have proven two of the functions here, and I believe uh, you probably would have seen the ease of use, the ease by which I can drag and drop, and literally using the arrows, I can connect the data from the source to the destination. But also, you should have noticed the, the power of this, this tool that you have got the calculator in there where I can actually do formulas on the fly and do um, log or write data, um, the computed data uh, into the destination. Right, that is all from my side. Um,